And tonight we're shining a light on Canada's health care system, the ongoing shortcomings, wait times, lack of advocacy. Jonathan Andrews of Bradford, Ontario, fell ill after a trip to Latin America. In fact, things got so bad that he was having trouble breathing, even moving. Dozens and dozens of tests later, he was finally diagnosed with Lyme disease, but the impact on him has been horrific. And he's hoping for treatment abroad in Thailand, where we understand he's currently en route to with his parents. I spoke with Jonathan just uh, a little while, before, a few days ago before he left. Jonathan, really appreciate you giving me your time today. Thank you for this. Yeah, happy to be here. Uh, take us back to what happened to you two years ago. Uh, at the time, I was uh, living in Guatemala with uh, some friends, and I was just finishing the end of my book. And uh, we were just having fun with friends and went cliff jumping at a popular spot on the lake. And I landed on my back and was in the hospital for a few days. And uh, when I got out, I was having a hard time walking and uh, a lot of mobility issues. Mm -hmm. So I actually called my parents and said, hey, I'm going to come home to Canada because I was um, finding it more difficult to take care of myself. And um, when we got back, we did more tests. But uh, it was a time in my life where it was a little bit hectic. And um, I was trying to release a book. And so I was invited to Florida to do a book launch. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it was a combination of some physical challenges, uh, emotionally and mentally, a difficult time. I was trying to put something in the world that I was really passionate about and excited about. Mm -hmm. And found that things started to kind of unravel for me. I started having panic attacks and it started to be difficult to breathe. And I started hurting myself really easily, like when I was walking or when I was trying to do physiotherapy. And since then, um, just things have been getting uh, worse and worse. And eventually um, I wasn't able to stand. And eventually um, my parents pretty much had to start because I became dependent on my parents and they had to start taking care of me every day. Yeah, having all of those mobility issues. I know you had breathing issues as well. Um, this all leading to dozens and dozens and dozens of tests, trying to get some understanding diagnosis of what was going on with you, but it was very frustrating. You weren't able to get much of a diagnosis. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging. I mean, the body's uh, super complex and uh, one of the things that I've learned is that when something gets injured, nothing gets injured alone. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. All the systems work together. So, you know, we looked at, you know, could it be a neurological problem? And um, they didn't find any challenges. And everything is so um, specialized and segmented. And so it was taking a really long time to get appointments to different specialists. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they didn't find anything in the neurological side and it took over a year to do that route. And then finally from there, we started looking at, okay, well, it's not that, what else could it be? Yeah, and that led to, um, and this is interesting, testing for mold and metal in your system? Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, so I got pretty frustrated that things were happening so slowly and I wasn't getting better and my mom um, was basically on the phone every single day advocating for me to get new referrals and to visit new doctors. And we even tried going to emergency rooms to just explain our situation to new people and say, hey, like, we're not getting any help. Like, what would you recommend we do? And we found new paths from there. But eventually, I found someone that was taking a more holistic approach. I really appreciate the work that I did with Carl Weston. He's a holistic coach in the Ontario area. And he said, hey man, like you should get tested for uh, Lyme disease and mold toxicity mm -hmm. and metals and parasites and things that they haven't tested for yet. Um, and we did that and we actually found that there was a lot of uh, things that these tests showed that are impacting my body. So where do things go from here? Because I know that um, water helps, you being in a pool helps to a certain extent with your mobility and which is so important um, rather than you as you say there you're lying there you and and and, and because it's very difficult to move um, but where do things go from here my understanding is is you and the family have been trying to get to thailand for some treatment there um, what is that treatment and i 
assuming this is not available to you here in Canada? Yeah, they don't have a uh, Lyme disease process or protocol here with OHIP. Um, and because everything has taken so long, um, we are prepared to do it in a different system. We're hoping that uh, we have a lot of faith in um, our friends and our colleagues out in Thailand that they'll be able to help treat with the Lyme disease that they found and the mold toxicity that they found. These are all things that you know we hadn't been tested for until we went outside of the allopathic medical model, the traditional medical model. And so we want to go somewhere that has a more, uh, a different way of thinking about things. And so I'm really optimistic that they'll be able to help me there. What are you hoping is going to change here um, by sharing your story? And I know that there's a, a GoFundMe as well. All of this is very, very expensive. Um, but what are you hoping to um, make people aware of? Uh, you know, when you, when you talk about Lyme disease and what it can do to a person, um, this is not the first case. And I guess the question being is, is why were you not tested in the first place as, as to rule it out? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's unfortunately a complicated situation when you don't know what's wrong with someone. Um, what I would advocate for and what I think that my message is, is like for people to get really curious mm. about their situation. Like I had, I had, it was really difficult for us because we had doctors that, that there's nothing we can do um, without saying, hey, maybe go talk to this person or refer to a different part of the body or a different system in the body. I know that the doctors here are well-meaning, they're good people, mm. uh, they're overburdened, it's, they're understaffed. And, uh, we saw that when we went to all the hospitals, just huge lines and so to, to get cured. And uh, you really don't have a choice but to advocate mm. for yourself. I know you're trying to get to Thailand. I know that that trip has been delayed a couple of times and, and we're hoping that, that you um, will be getting there. Before I let you go though, when you talked about writing this book, I know that you've been a huge advocate for men's mental health, for mental health, positivity. Um, what are you doing to try and keep yourself, your family uh, positive through all of this in hopes that you know what, you're, you, this, this is, this is gonna turn around soon? Yeah, it's uh, definitely been very challenging. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to see firsthand how your thoughts and your emotions really impact your physical state. Because I'm already in a lot of pain and I already have limited mobility. But when I allow myself to get frustrated and angry and annoyed, it's all worse. It, mm -hmm. I hurt more, I ache more, my, my mobility is worse. So what I found is that meditation has been really helpful. And then the last thing is just spending time with good people. Like my family, the support of people in the world. I have amazing friends to reach out to try to help. Well, we know try your family is amazing and all the support that they've been providing you. And we really appreciate you sharing your story. We want to stay in touch with you to see how things are, how things are faring and, and hopes that that treatment does help you. Jonathan, thank you so much for this. I wish you well. Thanks, Angie. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's Jonathan Andrews is speaking to us.